In my last video, I used a lot of 3D terrain sequences to explain geography around Nanda Devi and surrounding regions. And as you might have figured it out from the title and thumbnail, I did it all in DaVinci Resolve. To create a 3D terrain, the only asset you must require is this black and white image, which is called a height map. You can probably guess how it works. Darker the shade, lower the altitude it represents, brighter means higher. You can get height maps for free at this website called 10gramheightmapper.io. Just go to the region of which you want a height map. I am going for the town I live in and press render. Now a height map is the only requirement, sure. But to actually make your terrain a bit better looking than this, you might like to put an image on the top of 3D terrain you generated. Quite likely an actual map or satellite image of the region. Well, you can just get it from Google Earth at a pretty respectable resolution. If you do use an image, make sure the aspect ratio of your height map and overlay image are the same. And if you use a map or satellite image, you will have to align both of them. You can do that on Resolve, but I prefer to do that on Photoshop beforehand. Now we have everything we need to create our 3D terrain, so off to DaVinci Resolve now. In Resolve, I'll go to the project and then to edit page and drop in a fusion composition on the timeline. Let's make it about 10 seconds long and now let's go to fusion page. Right, so if you are not familiar with node based workflow or fusion, this is going to look a bit intimidating, but it is pretty easy, fairly easy and intuitive. Let me just begin the work and you will see in a second. So let me drop my two assets, the satellite map and height map as media in nodes. Let me rename them accordingly and if I drag them up in the viewer window, you can see them. Now let's begin with satellite map. This is a 2D object, it's a JPEG image. To create 3D plane out of this image, we need a node called image plane 3D. Let me just drop it down and connect them up. Now if I drag this plane 3D up in the viewer, you can see we have a plane in 3D space. Now let me just lay it down flat by changing plane 3D's X rotation to negative 90. There we go. Now let me just connect the height map but I can't just simply connect it to the image plane. To connect it I need one more node called displace 3D. Let me just put it down here, connect image plane as primary input and height map over here and that's it. If I drag this node up, here's your terrain and it looks awful. There are two things that you can do to fix this. 1. Reduce the scale in displays 3D node. What that does is pretty obvious. Looks fine but it is still bad. It's too, as the gamers say it, low poly. To convert it into a high poly object, go to your image plane node. And if you tick the wireframe, you can actually see how many points are being used to create this terrain. I'll just increase the number of points or subdivisions. Let me just turn off wireframe. And this looks better. I'll just add one more zero here. After a bit of tweaking, the terrain looks good. Now to export it, let me just connect displays 3D to media out. But I can't. The thing is, this all is 3D and media out is a 2D node. It represents the final output, which is a video. To convert 3D to 2D, we need this node called renderer 3D. Now we have our output, let me switch to dual viewer. That might not look like you want it to. For actually creating a good viewable 3D sequence like sweep shots, you need a virtual camera. And sure enough, there is a node for that, called Camera 3D. As I move and rotate this around, you can see how our final result changes. Camera 3D works great with this feature called Use Target, which creates a virtual point towards which the camera always points. To actually create the camera motion, I'll go to the beginning of timeline here and keyframe the camera's position by clicking this dot against its X, Y and Z coordinates. Same for the target. Then I'll go to different point in my timeline, move the camera and target to a desired location and do the same. This will create a camera motion between the two points on timeline. As a final cherry on top, I'll ease the motion by going to spline, selecting all points and pressing F, otherwise the motion will abruptly stop like this. And that's it, that's how you create a 3D terrain sequence. Thanks for watching, I'll meet you next time with something different, bye for now.